Uh, so good to see everybody this morning. You guys doing good? Good, good. We're continuing our series today that we've been in this summer on the book of Proverbs. And we've been talking about wisdom over these last several weeks. And today I want to talk to you about the power of our words. Words are powerful, aren't they? Have you ever had somebody say something about you that was not true? As you were dealing with that, that, that false accusation, that untruth was heavy on you. It shaped you. It did something to you. Or maybe someone said something about you that was so mean and just wore you down. And, and, and that has created this difficulty, this anxiety, this stress that's on your life because of words that were used to tear you down. Our words are powerful. At the same time, our words can bring pain and difficulty. On the flip side, we've also had words that people spoke over us and spoke to us that shaped us, that built us, that pushed us to another place, that made us into who God's called us to be. Our words are powerful. Our words are incredibly powerful. Do you remember when someone shared the words with you about the good news of Jesus Christ? Now think about this for a minute. Words can tear you down and bring incredible pain into your life. And at the same time, words can share the eternal news of Jesus Christ and change the eternal destination of your soul. Words matter. How we use our words shapes people's lives. You can either bring great pain and suffering through your words, or you can give life and share the most important news, the good news of Jesus Christ with your words. Let me ask you today, how are you using this incredible gift you've been given, the words from your mouth? How are you using your words? If you stop and think about it, many of us in our journey, in our story, have words that have wounded us and hurt us, but then we've also had words that have built us up. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 7. Check out what God's Word says. It says, a fool's mouth is his destruction. Now, I just want to pause there for a minute because we've seen this in real life. Like, we've seen people who use their words and out of nowhere, they just created destruction with their mouth. And it says, a fool's mouth is his destruction. And it goes on and it says, and his lips are the snare or trap of his soul. How you use your words matters. How I use my words, it matters. He goes on later in chapter 18 of Proverbs and in verse 21, and he says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now think about that for a minute. Your tongue, your words can bring death and pain and difficulty, and at the same time, your words can give life to people. How are you using your words? He goes on and he says, and those who... Love it will eat its fruit. The way we use our words matters. Here we are on Father's Day and the words of a father are weighty. I talked about this a few weeks ago where I talked about the pain of our fathers. And many of us have been shaped negatively or positively by the words of others. And I just want to remind all the dads out there, those watching online, those in the rooms, in the room today, your words matter. How are you using your words? How are you using your words? Now, can we just be honest today? We've all misused our words. Everybody that's in this room, everybody that's watching online has used your words in an inappropriate way. You've used your words where your tongue slipped and you said things about somebody that were untrue. You said something about somebody that tore them down. You said something that discredited them. You dishonored the Lord with your words. Right? We've all done this. This may be the most relevant message I've ever preached because I know for a fact everybody struggled with it. We've all misused our words, but we've all used our words to encourage somebody. We've all used our words to give somebody the words that they needed to get through what they were going through to get on the other side. We've used our words, hopefully, to declare the good news of Jesus Christ to other people. I hope I'm making my point here. Your words matter. They can bring life, but they can also bring death. How are you using your words? You know, something I've discovered about myself is there's a lot of times I like to use my words. I don't know if you guys are guilty of this. And say something that's 
harmful or negative or discrediting about somebody else because it makes me feel good about myself. Anybody else ever done that? Oh, good, just me. Thank you. Thank you. Now I don't feel awkward at all since I'm the one standing on the stage. Right? You know, when I ask the question, I know it's true. We've all done it. Our words matter. Our words are weighty. And so today as we talk about this powerful truth that we learn all throughout the book of, the Prover- book of Proverbs and the Scripture through God's Word, we know our words matter. And so I want to I share a few things about the power of words. And the first thing I want us to know about the power of our words is our words start fires. Our words start fires. Check out what God's Word says in the New Testament in James chapter 3. Verse 5 through 6, it says, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Right? We, we, we see on the news, oh, there's these forest fires, and we all know that it was started by just a small spark. A small spark can create a great fire. And it says the tongue is also a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it and is itself on fire by hell. Your tongue starts fires. And so here's the question I have for you. Are you starting fires that are burning down houses? Or are you starting fires that give warmth and protection? Right? If you've ever been camping... And it gets cold where I grew up in Mississippi when I was a Boy Scout. We would go camping and I was wanting a fire because it was about 45 degrees at night. And the fire kept us warm and protected us, gave us light and warmth. What kind of fire are you starting with your, with your words? Are you starting fires that burn things down? Or are you starting fires that give life and warmth and protection? You see, our words, they create culture. Right? Let's think about this. In your family... The way you use words and the language that you use creates a culture within your family that the people within the family experience. Our words shape culture. It's true in family, it's true in business, it's true in, 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 all, in, in teams, right? You can have a team, a sports team, and, and the language in which you use sets the culture of the team and determines the mindset and the perspective of the people that make up the team. Our words are weighty. They start fires. They shape culture. This small three-inch muscle in our mouth has the power to destroy people. It has the power to destroy families. It has the power to destroy your marriage and your church. But on the flip side, it has the power to build up to communicate love. It has the power to share the good news of Jesus Christ. The same muscle in your mouth that communicates words can give people eternal life or lead people astray. How are you using your words? Our words matter. You remember the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. That's not true. I can recover sometimes from a stick getting hit in the head, you know, or in the arm. But sometimes words cut so deep that they never go away. Most people that, being a pastor now for a couple years, what I've discovered over this time is most people's biggest problems in their life are emotional and it shaped them from the words that were used in their life. It has a big deal of shaping you and making you into who you are. And so my question is, what kind of fires are you starting? Are you starting fires that burn houses down with your words? Or are you starting fires that bring warmth and protection? What kind of culture are you creating with the tongue that God gave you? Is it a life-giving, thriving culture, or is it negative and destructive and foul? I wanted to give you guys this example that I put together. And if you've been in, in uh, leadership and, and studied leadership, you've probably seen this same matrix used. But I, w- I want to show you guys, I call it the power of words matrix, okay? It's just a visual for you to see. They're going to put it on the screen for me. The power of words matrix. Throw that up there for me right now. So check this out. So the power of our words matrix. 
So when we use our words, we're going to talk through each of these four quadrants because I want to give you this image of the weight of our words and how they shape the people's lives that are around us. So high support, example of high support language would be this. I believe in you. You can do it. Don't quit. Keep going. It's in you. Greatness is in you, right? It's high support. I'm, I'm challenged. I'm encouraging you. On the other side of that, high challenge is, hey, you got to do better. That's, that's not good enough. you got, you got to push yourself harder, right? And so when I do high support and high challenge, what I do is I create a culture of empowerment that pushes people to greatness. Okay, that's the weight of our words. This is true. I, I used to use this a lot. And, and this is the same thing in business or leadership when I did coaching on how to create a culture that's healthy and thriving in your organization. Right? You've seen this example used. On the, on the other side of it, if you have high support, now check this out, and you're like, hey, you can do it. I believe in you. You can do this. But then there's low challenge. There's not, there's not like, hey, that's not good enough. It's just Hey, sweetie, you're the cutest thing I've ever seen. But there's no correction. There's no pushing. What you create is you create a culture of entitlement. And there's a lot of people who've created that in maybe their children. Uh-oh. In our culture, we have a lot of entitlement. Right? Because of, because of this. Now, if, you've got, if you have high challenge but there's low support, let's do that example. Hey, you can do it. I believe in you. You've got to push yourself harder. There's a lot of challenge in there. But then there's no support. There's no like, hey, man, I believe in you. What you create is you create a culture of fear. Some of us played sports for a coach like that. Right? It was just a fear-based culture. Like, you better produce or you're out of here. There was no support along with the challenge. We need both. Now, if you have a low challenge and a low support, you're not going to like being around me. Okay? Because I don't like that. That's a culture of apathy. And that may be where you are in your life. How we use our language, how we use our words within our family matters. How are you using your, your words with your family? How are you using your words with the people that are around you? Now, I want you to think about this. God is a high challenge, high support God. Think about Jesus. Jesus models the very heart of God. He shows us the heart of God and how he lived. And Jesus would call people and say, hey, I'm here for you. I'm going to make a way for you. He died on the cross for you. But go and sin no more. High support. But the challenge is, hey, you can't stay where you are. There's more for you. Right? That's where God is. That's where discipleship is. And so how you use your language matters. For many of us, especially men in the room, can we just be honest? A lot of the dads, maybe you are high challenge and low support, and you're just wearing your kid down. I found myself in that spot a couple times where I was pushing my son really hard because I believe in him, but I was forgetting to tell him the part that I believe in him. I was just pushing him. And if we do that, we can create a culture of fear. For others, I've seen maybe the most common is the high support, right? Oh, you're so sweet. You're so cute. You're so great. But then there, there's no challenge, right? We're, we're, we're okay with status quo. We're okay with just not doing anything significant for God. And then we create the culture of entitlement. And we create a bunch of whiny babies, right? Our words matter, our words matter. What, what kind of culture are you creating? What kind of fires are you starting? The second thing I want you to see, not only do our words start fires, but our words reveal our heart. You see, what comes out of my mouth is more than just language and words and sounds. What comes out of my mouth is revealing something deeper in my soul. At least that's what Jesus said. Matthew 15, 18, Jesus said this, but the things that come out of a person's mouth Come from the heart, and these defile them. You see, what is really in my heart is revealed with the words that come out of my mouth. So the question, the surface question would be, hey, what's coming out of your mouth? But the deeper question is, what are you putting in your heart? 
Because what I'm putting in my heart is ultimately going to come out of my mouth. And here, can we all take a test together today? Everybody watching online, everybody in the room, we're about to take a test. Are you ready? You ready for the test? Okay. Here's how you can reveal if there's a sickness in your soul. What's coming out of your mouth? If it's inappropriate, if it's not honoring to the Lord, if it's negative and destructive... That's, that's the symptom. The sickness is something deeper. It's below the surface. And so what I need to do is I don't need to just go, well, I need mama to wash my mouth out with a bar of soap. Well, you may need that. We can have a line out there in the lobby because some of you probably need it. But, okay, that's the symptom. The sickness is something deeper. Why is this coming out? Why am I talking like this? Why am I destructive? Why am I tearing down? Why am I not lifting up and encouraging and being high support and high challenge? Why am I not proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ? Why am I not preaching the gospel? Maybe there's something that God wants to do in my soul because I was talking to a friend of mine in the lobby and he said, you know, an old country preacher, which, hey, that's kind of who I am. Uh, I'm from the country and I like it that way. Um, I'm from Mississippi, so, you know. Um, did y'all know that song? No, no, two of you. Okay. Two, two other rednecks are here. Um, glad that you joined us today. But, you know, he said, what's in the well comes up in the bucket. Right? What is in the well is going to come up in the bucket. What's in your well? What's in your soul? It's not just a surface thing. See, we could play on the surface and be like, oh, you know, I need to straighten up my language. I don't need to, I don't need to talk like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, you don't. But maybe you need to do some searching in your soul. See, what I've discovered in myself, if, if, if I find myself being negative, if I find myself being destructive, if I find myself being inappropriate, you guys know I would never do that, except on the golf course, um, because I hit it to the right all the time. But I don't, I don't talk bad on the golf course. That's a total joke. But in all seriousness, when I find myself not honoring God with my, my words, it's revealing something that I need to take a look at in my heart. What does God want to do in you? Man, your words matter. Your words matter. It's funny how we repeat the pain of words that were said to us. Most of us, when we use our words that are destructive, it was some sort of word that was spoken to us. And we need to take an honest evaluation and say, I'm not going to repeat that. I'm not going to create the pain that was put on me and put that on my own children or my own family or our own people around me. Ephesians 4.29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others in according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Now, what may be helpful according to their needs might be challenge. It doesn't mean that you just have to be a sweetheart and just say sweet, nice things. Sometimes the thing that needs to be said is the hard thing. Can we all agree that we grew the most when somebody told us the truth? Right? The truth sometimes is uncomfortable. It's grace and truth. Right? Grace and truth That's who Jesus was. He was full of both. Is high support, high challenge. It's the language of the words we use. Satan wants to take this gift of our words and he wants to destroy them and turn them into a thing that divides and destroys. Here's here's the thing. I always go back to the Bible. (laughs) I love the Bible. Like, I love the Word of God. Hope City Church is a church that's built on the Word of, of the Lord. Okay, we're going to stand on it. We ain't wavering from it. I'm going to tell you, these churches, I'm just going to get on, I'm going to, I don't get on many rabbit trails, but I'm going to go down one right now. If you put your Bible down, the Holy Spirit will not anoint what you're doing. You better know it. This is given from Him. It is His Word. Jesus is the living Word. This is His written Word. You better build your life on it. And here's what needs to happen in our lives. How we get this sickness out of our soul is to Dedicate our hearts and our minds to the Word of God. It will transform and reshape us and transform us and change us. God's Word is the antidote. It's the weapon that I use to transform 
my heart, my mind. Our words reveal our hearts. Our words start fires. The last thing I want you to see is our words worship something. Did you know that everybody worships? Everybody worships something. So when you go into the Old Testament, they were worshiping all kinds of weird stuff. Everybody worships. The question is, what are your words worshiping? What are you using your words to worship? Everybody is a worshiper. James chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, it says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Now, that doesn't make sense, does it? Verse 10, he says, Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing? My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Now, do I need to break that down in the Greek? This should not be. There is a disconnect. Think about this. The power of your words, the power of them. What does the scripture say? It says, one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Your words matter. Your confession matters. How you use them matters. Ultimately, at least in my life, and I know this is true for your sin is the reason that my tongue gets out of whack. And I can come in here and say, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And then walk out of here and curse people. Like, can we just be honest? That doesn't make sense. That's discombobulated. That's not what honors God. You see, now here's the thing. You could hear what I'm saying right now and you could say, Woo, I got to quit all that cursing. I got to quit that cursing. And yeah, you do. You need to quit the cursing. Can, can, I, can I just point this out? Maybe in our culture where inappropriate language has become so common, maybe the thing that would make you stick out so much is to use your language in a way that honors God. Being a man, I grew up, I love you, Dad. It's Happy Father's Day, but i got to be honest here. I grew up in a sailor's home, or at least he talked like one. His dad was one, my grandpa, but he talked like one. And, and as a kid, I thought, well, that's what it means to be a man. Like, that's tough, man. Like, you use your language like that, and that means you've got some authority. And then I met Jesus, and I realized that's a weak man. Now, that may offend you. Good. You're weak when you use those words. Use your words that honor God. It's weakness. You're hiding behind a pain. And I get it. We're in a culture where uh, I, I don't know how many kids are in here, so I want to be careful what I say. But, guys, your words matter. Your representation of Jesus Christ matters. It matters how you use your tongue. But it's not just cursing. That's the surface. You do need to make sure how you use your language. But what he's talking about is something deeper. He's talking about your soul. He's talking about compartmentalizing your life. I praise God over here. Praise the Lord. And then over here, I'm like just burning people down. I'm starting fires and burning down houses. You see the disconnect? Notice what he says later in the scripture as he continues I'll read James chapter 3, verse 10 again. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Verse 11, can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. What kind of spring are you? What's coming out of your soul? Maybe the way that you may be the greatest testimony for Jesus is when you're surrounded by people who are saying things that don't honor God and you use your mouth in a different way. You use it for worship to the Lord, not worship the culture and the world by your you know, use of your tongue. They're going to wonder, why are you so weird? Being weird is a good thing. Being weird for the Lord is a good thing because it's going to make you stick out for Jesus. And people are longing for hope and direction. 
Their lives are broken. But if you sound like everybody else and you use your words loose, they're not going to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in you because how can fresh water and salt water come out of the same spring? They're going to think you're salty. You need to be fresh, man, not salty, right? Just imagine with me for a minute if as a church we committed to use our words to start spiritual fires of revival. If we used our words to encourage others to follow Jesus, to serve Him, to run after Him, to go after Him. If we, if, if we used worship as our primary weapon in the ma- middle, middle of this battle that we face. You see, our, our words start fires. Our words reveal our heart. Our words worship something. What kind of fires are you starting? What kind of culture are you creating? What is this revealing in your heart? What are you using your words for? This is a lot easier to preach than it is to practice, isn't it? It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Because our words are easy to throw around. But I just want to remind us they matter. Just imagine with me for a minute if we used them differently. How God could use our lives. A lot of times I believe the suppression of the Holy Spirit in us is directly connected with what's coming out of us. How does God want to transform you? What does He want to do in you? Listen to God's Word. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. You see, it's a confession with my mouth and a faith within my soul, in my heart. That salvation comes. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. That means that it is settled and it was just if I'd never sinned before God. Because of what Jesus did. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Your words, they matter. How will you use them today? How will you use them today? You see, God wants to do a work in you. God wants to do a work in you. But you got to get to that point to where you say, you know what? I need faith in Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to declare with my mouth that He is Lord and Savior, and I'm going to believe in my heart by faith that He has made a way for my sins to be forgiven. And when you do that, everything changes. Being a Christian, you don't need to just clean up your mouth. You don't need to get get your life in order. You need to repent of your sin. That's a way bigger deal. It's a way bigger deal. And you know this so amazing about God? This blows my mind. I'll never get over it. Is that God is so good and merciful and gracious toward us that all of us hear a message like this, at least I do, when I'm writing it, I'm like, whoo, Lord, I need to to make sure I got a hold of this tongue because it's wild. It gets out of control. I need to honor you with it. And when I repent and I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Guess what? He is faithful and just to forgive you, to make you right with Him. Do you have that in your life today? Today is Father's Day. And I want to tell you a story real quick. Your heavenly Father, He sees you. He knows you. He loves you. And He sent His Son to make a way for you. You've got to receive the gift. You've got to believe by faith in your heart and confess Jesus as Lord with your mouth. I want to help you do that right now. That'll change everything in your life. That's why I'm up here preaching. I'm not up here preaching to try to get you to clean up. I'm preaching because I want you to know Jesus. I want to use my words because they matter so that you can know him. Do you know him? Right now is your chance. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Now, you can regurgitate the words of the prayer, and that's not going to save you. Okay? It's got to be heart, faith, and words. 
Declare him with your mouth. Let's ask, I want to ask everybody to bow your heads as we respond in obedience to the Lord right now in this moment to say yes to Jesus Christ. If that's you and you've never said, Lord, I'm trusting you, I'm putting my faith in you, I'm making you the Lord of my life today. If that's you, nobody's looking at you but me right now in this moment. Just slip your hand up so I can see who you are because I'm going to lead you in prayer. Anybody else? I see you. I see you. Anybody else? I see you. All right. You can put your hands down. Anybody else? That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to respond to the Lord today and just call on his name for the forgiveness of sins. And I want to lead you in a prayer to say yes to him. If you're comfortable, I want to invite everybody just to out loud join those who are saying yes to Jesus as Lord today. So let's pray this together. Father in heaven, I admit I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross, to remove my sin, my shame, and my guilt. I believe Jesus rose from the dead to give me a place in heaven, a purpose on earth, and a relationship with you. Today I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I turn from my sin to be born again. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. The Holy Spirit is my helper, and heaven is now my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's celebrate that today. That's awesome. That's so good. I, I saw there were several of you that responded to, to that, just to trust Jesus today, and I'm so thankful. Before you leave, if you'll just take this card and um, just put the information you're comfortable sharing on the front. We're not going to sell your email address or anything like that. We just want to connect with you. We want to help you. We want to resource you. We want to give you what you need to grow and to know more about Jesus Christ. So fill that out. And then the, the top box on the back says, Today I accepted Jesus. Let us know about that. Okay? And then the second box says, Send me more information about being baptized. If you've trusted in Jesus, you need to take that step to, to declare him through, through, through obedience and baptism. And so I want to invite you to do that. Now, we're having beach baptism again July 20th, Saturday, July 20th. If you want to be a part of that, let us know about that. We'd love for you to be obedient and take that step of declaring Jesus publicly as the Lord of your life through baptism. And so let us know about that. You can drop this card in the box on your way. Also, if, if you made a decision today, listen, or if you just need a Bible, I have free Bibles, okay? We want the Word of God in your hand, not just on your mobile device. I, I, I love a physical Bible. Note this on the Bible app, I use that too. But we have free Bibles. I'd love to give you one. If you don't have one, when you walk out of here, look to the left at our resource center. That's where our first time guest t shirt is. We'd love to give you a Bible. There's also a resource there that myself, and Seth Jones on our team put together called Getting Started. This is going to guide you through what it means to have a relationship with Jesus and grow in that relationship. There's videos that go along with that. You can scan the QR code in the book and sign up for that. It's totally free. These are gifts to help you. We are here for one reason, to share Jesus Christ and to resource you to grow in him. Okay? We have a relentless dedication to share the hope of Jesus. Hope to the city, Hope City, with our city and beyond. We love you. Guys, don't forget to get your chomps beef stick. Thank you for being here. I love you guys. I'll be back next week. Can't wait to see you then. See you.